welcome to Introduction to Physical Geography Part 2, and this is going to cover some more basics of physical geography, just some basic concepts, um, things that kind of don't fit in any other category, really. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is great and small circles. And the thing to know about these is if you're looking at a diagram of the Earth and it's been split, this is where you have great and small circles come into play. Now our blue circle in our diagram is a small circle. Small circles are circles that cut the earth into pieces, but don't use the center of the earth as the center of the actual circle. Um, there are infinite small circles just as there are infinite great circles. Great circles use the center of the earth as the center of their circle. They are basically cutting the earth in half. It's like cutting a tomato in half, cutting an orange, an apple, anything like that. You're splitting it right down the middle. Um, but what's important to note here is that the equator is the only parallel that is a great circle. Um, there are infinite great circles, but the equator is the only parallel one. Because if you go north or south of the equator and cut into the earth, you're going to create a small circle. So you have to do it at an angle from the equator. Whoops. Sorry. <clears throat> Alright, let's go on to map scales. This is another important part of physical geography because you're going to be looking at maps quite a bit. Especially if you're using Google um, Earth. While you aren't going to be like using a map that's going to tell you exactly what the scale is, you'll be looking at something and having to go, okay, am I looking at something at a large scale or a small scale? So, the scale of a map tells you the ratio between the units on the map and on the ground. So, if you had a one-to-one -one ratio, that's saying one centimeter on paper equals one centimeter on the ground. That's not useful. If you were mapping anything, you would have to have a gigantic map. So, it's not useful. A more useful scale would be one to say one million um, because one million can be easily converted in metric. Um, all right, so let's look at large scale maps. We have a map of Bay City, Michigan on our far left. Think of large scale maps as zooming in on a location. It allows you to see details and allows you to see physical features in a larger appearance. So instead of seeing a tiny little crack where a canyon might be, you see a gigantic crevice of a canyon. Um, so think of it like zooming in. Instead of looking at an entire state, you're looking at a town. Instead of looking at a town, you're looking at a city block. Things like that. Now let's talk about small scale. Small scale makes geographical features smaller. So instead of having a decent sized lake, we have a pond on our map. That is the type of relationship that we have going. Um, think of it like zooming out. You're looking at a wider area of the earth. You see the details. You see less details. They're smaller. Okay? Think of it like that. And then we have the verbal scale. This is when someone tells you one inch to 2,000 feet. This is useful when talking among yourself or among hikers but it's not useful if you're looking at a map because you're never going to see a verbal scale on a map. 
Um, so, <clears throat> if, sorry, lost the train of thought. Instead of just giving you the ratio, I'm telling you the units, which is important. Because instead of t giving you one inch to however in however many inches 2,000 feet equals out to, I'm giving you one inch equals 2,000 feet. That's a much nicer number. You don't have to do any converting in your head. You don't have to get a calculator out. Um, it's already there. You know what your units are. But again, you're not going to have that on an actual map. All right, let's talk about temporal and spatial scales. These are important things to know when you're thinking about what is the length of time that you're going to be looking at something. So earthquakes happen in minutes. Hurricanes take days. The pattern of El Nino takes years. Climate change is observed in decades. Soil development is seen over the course of hundreds of years. Forest migration takes thousands of years. To build a mountain, it takes millions of years. That's what a temporal scale looks like. Similar thing to a spatial scale. If I'm using feet, I'm probably going to be looking at something small like a cliff face. If I'm using miles, I'm looking at something like a mountain. If I'm looking at tens of miles, I'm looking at a mountain range. Thousands of miles is going to be a continent, maybe an ocean. Tens of thousands of miles, it's going to be the earth. These are important things to know because they're, they make it easier to relate things to each other. <clears throat> and then we have true and intermediate directions. Now, the only true directions that there are are north, south, east, and west. I don't know why that says O. Oh. I think it's because, um, oh, now I know why. This was one of my compasses that I got that is in, I believe that's German. Sorry. Um, so the O should be a W. Um, but I just noticed that. I'm so sorry. Between the true directions, we have intermediate directions. And this takes the 90 degree angle between like north and east, east and south, south and west, west and north, and cuts it in half. So we have north to northeast, northeast to east, east to southeast, southeast to south, south to southwest, southwest to west, west to northwest, northwest to north. Those are those types of things. These aren't true directions, they're intermediate directions. Now sometimes people will go even a step further and you'll get it cut into north-northeast, east-northeast. Um, but these can get confusing. If you have to do something with this, I suggest getting a piece of paper and using it to go straight off of the compass and keep your lines lined up. And that is our presentation for today. I hope I was able to make things clearer for you and I hope that that last little snafu didn't throw you off completely. Have a good one!